Welcome to a new program about creation and creationism, hosted by Alpha Omega TV. Our guest today is Mr. John Mackay, geologist. Welcome, sir. International Director of Creation Research Australia. It's good to be here in Romania. Thank you so much. Mr. Mackay, I've been witnessing scores of discussions on facts or faith, facts and faith. Um, I've been accused, some others were accused, of doing religion when we're supposed to do science. Science deals with facts, religion doesn't. Could you please help me sort out this? Uh, is okay. there any difference? Do they help one another, exclude one another? Well, you've, you've um, certainly come onto a very important issue because right at the end of last year, the American Science Teachers Association published a statement about what science was. And basically, to give it in a nutshell, they said it excludes God, has no reference to any God, uh, and therefore it's naturalistic, it's naturalism. And uh, so they've said, there's the line, on this side there's science, on that side there's religion, on this side there's faith, a uh, fact rather, on that side there's faith, and the two have nothing to do with each other. Now, it's a popularly believed statement, but it turns out to be totally false. Let me illustrate it to you. Um, I got here in the studio before you for this program, correct? Yes. I watched you come in and sit down. Now, you sat down by faith. I can prove it. You see, I did not see you bend down to check if any of the cameramen had taken a hacksaw to cut through the legs of the chair. You didn't, did you? No, I didn't. So therefore you assumed or you believed that the chair was safe to sit in, correct? Yes. Okay, now wherever you assume something or you believe it or you hope it's true, the word faith comes into existence because you did not check the facts. But now that you've sat down by faith, there needs to be another point made. It's not your faith which is holding you up. It's the fact that the chair is worth having faith in. Now you see, the Bible has an interesting point mm -hmm. about this whole issue. And in fact, the more you study science, the more you begin to realize that fact and faith are actually like that. And anybody who tries to separate them is lying to you. What they've really done is join the facts to a different faith. Now, um, the impact of the Bible in the history of scientific thinking has been profound. Let me just bring a couple of things. Being a geologist, I like to dig up fossils. You don't know what a fossil is, don't you? Well, a fossil is... Um, well, look, let me give you one and you can start again. Any suggestions as to what kind of fossil that is? <clears throat> well, an old one. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, let me make it plain for you. Okay. F-O-S-S is an old word, a Latin-based word, okay. right? Yes. It means whole. Mm -hmm. And I-L is what's in the hole. So guess what you've got to do to usually find fossils? Uh, let me guess. Uh, you dig a hole, you dig a hole and you grab the That's fossil. Right. Very good. And the rest is a story for children's textbooks. <laughs> you see, we dig up a trilobite like you've got there. Okay. And then they proceed to tell a story about millions and millions of years ago. Mm -hmm. And not once do they tell you that the word trilobite was invented in 1771 by somebody who was firmly convinced the world had been created. Hmm. Now, do you see why it's called a trilobite? Uh, I guess because it has uh, three lobes. Three lobes. Simple, there isn't it? Is. You see, mm -hmm. it, geology is a really down-to-earth subject. Yeah. It's the big words that confuse people. And if you can come to grips with the fact that anybody called this a three-lobed creature, yeah. But when you learn to say trilobite, they pay you a lot more, <laughs> right? And that's the only difference. Yeah. It's, it's really a simple yeah. subject. Okay, so there's one fossil. I'd better get out another one because we don't want to lose track of the fact that when people tell you science is over there, religion is over here, evolution is over there, creation is over here, fact is over there, and faith is over there, they are ignorant of the very nature of science. All right, now... Here's one of my favorite fossils. Mm. Do you know what it is? It seems to be a tooth. A tooth. <laughs> Quite a big one. Good, rather big. Uh, you'd probably have a good dentist bill if your tooth was that big. Oh, yeah. But you see, to you and I, it's so ev 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 you know, evident, self-evident, obvious that this is a, some sort of a bug and that's some sort of a tooth. Yes. And we never 
find out that it wasn't that obvious at all. You see, we know what shark this comes from today because this version of shark still lives in Australia, but it's only got teeth this big. Oh. So sharks have actually gone downhill. But get back to the main question. How did we find out this was a shark's tooth? Answer, there was a fellow who became a bishop in the church. Mm -hmm. His name in Latin was Steno. Mm -hmm. Those of you who are viewers who are watching and you do geology, you'll know about Steno's principles of superposition. Mm -hmm. He wrote the three basic ground rules for geology. Very rarely do they find out he became a bishop. Mm -hmm. And his whole framework was Christian, creation-based, and Noah's flood-based. Okay, now, what's all that got to do with shark's teeth? Well, he was the fellow who figured them out. Mm -hmm. You see, in his day, here's what people believed. You see, they saw them like that. And then they thought, aha. Oh, no. It looks like a tongue. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> so they called them tongue stones. Oh. And the big ones became daddy tongue stones. And the little ones became mummy tongue stones. And the little tiny ones became baby tongue stones. And it made a wonderful story. It's so hard to believe because you and I see sharks too. Yeah. We see fossil. They saw tongue stones. So we do have to ask a question, these were not stupid people. How did they reach that conclusion? And to find the answer, you have to go back and say, why do we call some school buildings gymnasiums? Do you know, by the way? Uh, it has something to do with Greek. Greeks, yeah. okay, so the Greek influence yes. dominated education for thousands of years. So question, what did the Greeks think? Answer? Well, we know what faith they had. In fact, do you remember how many gods they had? Something like zillions. <laughs> yeah, they had a god for Monday, a god for Tuesday, a god for Wednesday, a god for the ball game, a god for McDonald's, and one left over just in case, right? <laughs> just to make sure just to make sure happy. that everybody's happy. Yeah, they didn't want to offend anybody. Now, do you remember what their gods were like? Well, kind of like Superman, Batman's today. The... Yeah, Superman yeah. crossed with Batman <laughs> yeah. crossed with the Joker. Yeah. Yes. That's about it, right? And so you'll find that their gods were just us growing big. Oh, yeah. And if you could get drunk, they could get drunker. And if you could get angry, they could get angrier. And if you could play tricks, they could outsmart you any day of the week. I bet. Okay, now put that in your mind. And you're Joe, the, the Greek fisherman. And you go down and you dig up a rock. Yep. And you split it open. And in the rock, you find that. A fish. A fish. Mm. Okay. Now, to you, it's obvious. Yeah. It was obvious to Joe the Greek fisherman. Mm -hmm. But you see, he had a set of glasses on that was framed by his religious thinking. Mm -hmm. And everybody sees the facts through a set of glasses. And here's what Joe the Greek fisherman did. He said, I'm not stupid. Fishes don't live in rocks. Fishes live in the sea. Nice try, Zeus. <laughs> but you haven't fooled me this time. Pull the other leg. Oh, those gods, they've got a good sense of humor. <laughs> and they wrote down in their books that the fossils were put in the earth by the gods to play tricks on us. So, if the gods are playing tricks on us, I would have guessed there was the same thing. It really does look that way. <laughs> exactly right. Okay, so you just make it up as you go yeah. along. And so because the Greeks had the wrong religion, mm -hmm. they could never come up with the right science. You see, I, I keep telling people that if you don't ask the right questions, don't expect the right answers. And if you only have the wrong questions, you'll get nowhere near the exactly. right answers. Exactly. And so therefore, geology was not possible to them. Not because they were dumb, because look at the buildings they built, yeah. right? Not because they were imbecilic, mm -hmm but because the glasses they wore that described the world for them were wrong. They had the wrong faith, therefore there were certain facts they could not make use at all. Why not? Because fact and faith have to go hand in hand. You want to make use of the facts? You have to have the right faith. So don't be surprised, it's not until the, the Middle Ages and just after that You've heard of Martin Luther? Oh, of course, yes. I, I know you've got a, a, a degree in theology, yes. so tell me, what do you know about Martin Luther? Uh, I know about him that uh, as he studied his Bible, yeah. finally, yeah. he realized uh, what 
really salvation is and who's the So he had been a university student? Uh, yes, he was, yes. How did he earn his money to pay his way through? Uh, wasn't he a monk? Is well, he, yes, he, he was a monk as well, but yes. that's, that's only part of it. But you see, his father and he had been involved in all sorts of financial schemes, mm -hmm. including being dealers in coal. Yes, yeah. You yeah, heard exactly. of coal? Yes, right? yes I did. Okay, and coal <clears throat> is full of plant remains. So don't be surprised when Martin Luther finally wrote a commentary on Genesis, you begin to find reference to fossils. Mm -hmm. How do you get coal, by the way? Well, yeah. you just dig it out. Dig a hole, oh, fossil. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Okay, fossil, oh, yeah, good, catching yeah, on? Yeah, good, okay, good, yeah. these words are really important. So they dug up the coal and in it they found plants. Mm -hmm. Whereupon they have a new question. Mm -hmm. You see, how many gods did Martin Luther have? Just one. That's Just for one. sure. Okay. Did this god play tricks? No, at all. Did this god make the earth? Yes, he did. Ah, and Martin Luther is famous for knowing his Bible, correct? Oh, yes. In fact, the book that he loved most was Romans, correct? Yes, exactly. Okay, read me Romans chapter 1, verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Ah, so the God who made the world, you can see the evidence of his nature yes. in the things that he created. Exactly. Isn't that what it said? Yes, exactly. Okay, no, so sure. if this God could be trusted, yes. then what do you know about the rocks? Were they there to play tricks on you? No, they're not. Ah, so if God could be trusted, the rocks could be trusted. Oh, yes. Ah, now, you Joe the Christian fisherman. Wow. Good. Did you I were... evolve or just <laughs> I change? You were converted. <laughs> oh, thank you very okay. much. <laughs> and uh, so you, you wander down to the beach, you pick up a rock and you split it. Mm -hmm. And in it, you see what looks like a Fish. preserved herring. Oh, okay? yeah. This yes, is exactly. it is. Yeah, it yeah, is a herring. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, because you've broken open the rock, it's a fossil, you know mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. But you see, you've now got a different set of glasses than the ancient Greek man. Yes. And here's what goes through your mind. Fishes don't live in rocks. No, they don't. I'm not stupid. No, I'm Fishes not. live in the sea. Exactly. Question, how did it get from the sea <clears throat> to the rock? And all of a sudden, geology is possible. Mm -hmm. Not because you're any smarter, that because you've taken off the wrong faith glasses mm -hmm. and you put the right faith ones on. Good. So therefore, don't be surprised if you begin to dig into geology that you find Nicholas Steno mm -hmm. was a bishop. Aha! If it looks like a shark's tooth, it's probably a... Shark's, shark's tooth. tooth! What a revelation! <sighs> so obvious. But you see, you can only reach that conclusion if you believe that what you see can be trusted. Mm -hmm. And a Hindu doesn't. And a Buddhist doesn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think that cow over there was great grandmother recycled 13 times, <laughs> you will never do geology. That's right? environmental grandmother. <laughs> That's to right. make it clear. So, so therefore, you need to become the grips with the fact that geology is really an outgrowth from an initial Christian perspective, a yes. faith-based science that deals with facts. Mm. So you go to England, you dig out the oldest collection of fossils mm -hmm. in the English-speaking world, you dig out the oldest mm. book written on fossils by Professor John Woodward, and you discover it starts with creation, mm. and it moves through to Noah's flood. Mm. Why were they doing that? Mm. Okay, let's see if you can figure it out. I told you that was a fossil of what? Of a herring. Okay, can the viewers see it clearly the way you're holding it there? Uh, yes, they can. They can, that's very good. Okay, now look, when you have a look at that herring... Yes. By the way, how do you think I know that's a herring? Have you ever seen herrings before? Yes. Hmm. Okay, now, question. If you're trying to look for the evidence of evolution, is that herring any help to you? Ooh, not exactly. You see, the interesting thing about that verse in the book of Romans mm -hmm. is that the God who created, his nature shows in the creation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so therefore, if you're looking for the evidence of creation, number one, you would see what he is like in his creation. Question, does he ever change? No. Now go back to Genesis chapter 1 okay. and read us verse um, 
11, please. You see, these are all the thoughts that went through the first geologist's minds. Okay, so, so anyone who thinks today that faith and fact are separate mm -hmm. or in conflict really has been lied to. They've been fed a, a, a false pr proposition mm -hmm. and they don't know it. They've been mm -hmm. given a set of glasses to wear and nobody's told them. Mm, okay, the listeners, viewers, Genesis 1 verse 11, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit, after his kind, whose seed is it in itself upon the earth, and so it was. Aha. Uh -huh. Question. Yes? How did Steno reach the conclusion that was a shark's tooth? And how do we know that's a fossil herring? And what's it got to do with Genesis 1? And how would you invent geology on that basis? I mean, think carefully. You've already answered this question yes. in another way. And I'm making you do it because the listeners out there have never been asked these questions. Read the verse again to everybody. Ah, here is it. Ah, I good. Got the the key. penny drops. Yes, ping. <laughs> Let me read, If am I correct? After his kind. Good. Okay. Ah. And you see, Steno put two and two together and got four. four. Sharks today have teeth exactly. that look like this. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, these may be bigger. They may be longer or yeah. thinner or yeah. fatter or wider yeah. or broader, yeah. but basically they look like exactly. sharks teeth. Shark tooth. Ah, and if it is true that God created and God doesn't change, mm. and if it is true that God created creatures to produce their own kind, how would you recognize a fossil shark? Well, I see sharks today, uh, and knowing that sharks has been always, uh, they've been always sharks. Uh, what would they look like? Like sharks. Good. Are you a trained geologist as well now? Uh, <laughs> but you're doing well, I you won't see. Tell you. <laughs> this is the thinking that the geologist had to go through. So what about our fossil herring? How do we know it's a fossil herring? Well, we've seen a lot of fish, so ah. we know this is a fish too. So Good. What about our trilobites? Because we haven't seen one of those. Seen a mind. Well, I just demolished my own <laughs> little theory. <laughs> well, you haven't really. Um, All you've done is reached a new category of creatures. Because this one is extinct. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. He's died out. Mm -hmm. He obviously used to be because he looks like he's got eyes exactly. at the front yeah. end and a cute yeah. little mouth. And he's got, mm -hmm. you know, he just looks like a, a bug on the bottom of yeah, the seafloor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's not here anymore. Mm -hmm. There are some creatures a bit like him. So you think mm -hmm. maybe he's in that family. And you're pretty right when it turns out mm -hmm. to it. So therefore you have two categories of creatures. Those that have died out mm -hmm. and those that are still here. Mm -hmm. Which brings us up to another aspect of science which people are deceived about. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of Charles Darwin? Oh yes I did. What's he famous for? For his uh, theory of evolution. Okay, he wrote a book in 1859. Do you remember the name of it in English? On the origin of species. Origin of species, okay. And Charles Darwin's theory ultimately is that molecules that weren't alive somehow turned into cells that were alive, that turned into worms, some of which became politicians, some of which became, it's, you know, got the idea, right? So that's the theory of evolution. But he called it the origin of the species. And never once does he tell people where he gets that word from. Mm. You see, the interesting thing is the man who gave us our classification system, Carl von Linn, and you don't find this out in the textbooks. You have to sort of do what I did, leave university, and they say, where did Linnaeus get this idea from? And what you discover, he was basically an evangelical Lutheran. Yeah, yeah. And he believed his Bible, yes. and he believed that if God created creatures separately, mm -hmm. if God specially created yeah. creatures, mm -hmm. what would be a good word to use? Because they were separately and specially Special. created, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what better word than species? Species, yeah. So therefore, the whole concept of species is actually related to spatial creation. creation. And they never told you that, and they never told me that, no. because the minute they do it gives away the whole kitten caboodle. Yeah. Darwin is not telling us the truth. No. In fact, if you read Charles Darwin's book on the origin of the species, guess one thing it's not about? It's not about the origin of any species at all. <laughs> It's about what happens to the species when they're here. Mm -hmm. How they can be selected or killed off. Mm -hmm. That's what it's actually about. Mm -hmm. It's not about the origin of anything. anything. So therefore the whole book 
is a deceit. Mm -hmm. But it was popular because, well, particularly in England, they didn't like the strict rules of Queen Victoria. And those strict rules were based on the church's teaching that God had absolute right to make mm -hmm. rules. Yes. You want to get rid of Queen Victoria's rules, you have to get rid of the God who gave a basis those, for those yes. rules. He was the creator, so what better way? Throw out creation, introduce evolution, and you can go wherever you like mm. as chance dictates. You mentioned something very interesting that, uh, like, uh, now it, it turns out that uh, uh, scientists were clergymen, religious people, mm -hmm. so those who are at the very basis of science turn out to be Christians. Okay. Creation believers. Creation believers. Okay. Christian influence in okay. some cases, but you know, definitely they knew their Bible. Yeah. They knew it spoke about creation, and that was their starting point. Yeah. Um, could you please help us out a little bit on Charles Darwin's backgrounds? Because I mean, I I would guess that uh, he's called the father of all biological sciences today. It's kind mm -hmm. of that. Well, what is his background then? Okay, perhaps this fossil will help you. Where is it? There it is. Do you know what that Very is? Very nice. Well, it, it's either a claw or a tooth. Okay, it's a carnosaur tooth, right? Ooh. I lead field trips all around the world and we lead dinosaur digs on the Isle of Wight and we've got one coming up in Montana. This is beautiful. In July. It is beautiful, isn't it, right? And the interesting thing is Charles Darwin lived at the same time as the man who invented the word dinosaur. Was the word dinosaur invented? Yeah, right. yeah. It didn't come into existence till 1841. And you see, the one reason why Charles Darwin's book has got a chapter in it on fossils, mm -hmm. in which he says, the fossils are basically the worst part of my theory, is because of the man who invented the word dinosaur. You see, his name was Sir Richard Owen, and Sir Richard Owen was the founding director of the Natural History Museum in London and it was set up to be a showplace of all of God's creatures. Okay, hold on a minute. It was the British Natural History Museum? Yes, yes, that's how it started out. Isn't it the place today where all Darwinism is on show? Basically it is and it's, it's a sad betrayal of why it was set up because the man who invented the word dinosaur quote unquote, was sure that God made them. These were the monsters that God made. Now, Charles Darwin was there at the same time, mm -hmm. and Charles Darwin's father wanted him to become an Anglican priest, a clergyman, because there was good money in it, right? It was an occupation. Not that Charles Darwin's father was a churchman or a Christian, he was an atheist by all records. Mm. But it was a good occupation. Darwin tr tried a little bit of medicine at uh, Edinburgh University. Mm. Didn't like it, it was too messy. Um, so he didn't have much of a biological background. Mm -hmm. So he did train as a theologian. Now the interesting thing is, he graduated in theology and a little bit of maths and that thrown in the side and invented the theory of evolution while the scientists like Sir Richard Owen who were graduates in science and, you know, the founding director of the yes, British Museum yes. and the world's best geologist in the day, said, Mr. Darwin, there isn't a fossil to back up anything you say. Something's wrong. Yes. Doesn't, doesn't sound so, wrong? Yeah. And it's to do with the relationship of fact and faith. Darwin actually changed faith. Mm. So he needed a new explanation of the facts. Mm. You see, when his daughter Annie died, he turned his back on Christianity. And as his great-great-grandson said, from then on he was free to go in his evolutionary path unhindered by any Christian convictions. Well, we're talking about evolution being kind of religion? Yes, because you see, if you think it through carefully, Darwin was the first to admit because Professor Richard Owen said, you've got to say this, Charles, there's no fossils to back up anything. So therefore, Darwin never based his theory on the fossil evidence. Secondly, he lived before the work of Gregor Mendel, the priest who yes, was a yes, geneticist. He lived before his work had ever been published, mm -hmm. so Darwin knew nothing about genetics. genetics. And he never lived long enough to see anything evolve into something else at all. As I can so, remember, yeah. I'm therefore, sorry. The, the three things that you need for a scientific theory evidence that has happened, yes. evidence that is happening, and a way by which it can happen. Those three things are totally lacking 
from Charles Darwin's work on the origin of the species. As I'm informed, he actually admitted that there is really something that it's not helping his work at all. Oh yes, yeah, the fossils were the, the worst fossils. part of his theory. He knew that. The, well, he didn't have any choice. Professor Richard Owen was telling everybody who yes. would listen mm -hmm. that this is a terrible theory. Mm -hmm. So the scientists were his biggest opponents in the beginning. So therefore, yes, you're quite right in saying it. If, if you're talking about faiths, Christianity is a fact-based faith, okay. whereas evolution is an absolutely factless based faith. There is the difference. They're two religions, mm -hmm. but one is based on facts. That's why when you read your New Testament, the say the the, the, the Apostle Luke mm -hmm. says, you know, I've written to you Theophilus, yes. I've collected all the evidence and here it is, go and check it out, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's a fact based faith. Mm -hmm. Whereas the uh, theory of evolution, nobody was there to watch it happen. Darwin didn't have any evidence. He didn't know how it could. And I'll be honest, my professor at university, I went back and took genetics, and uh, the interesting thing is somebody said, but if evolution is so true, Professor, how come we can't see it happening? And the professor said, well, very profoundly, of course, evolution takes such a long time to happen, you wouldn't expect to see anything happening. Now, if you think about that, that's a nonsense. Yeah. Because what's the difference between something that's taking so long to happen that you don't see anything happen and something that you can't see happening because nothing's happening? Yeah. The answer is, it's crazy. So therefore, it's always been a blind face, faith-based religion. And that's the real conflict. Mm -hmm. It's not fact versus faith. It's not Christianity versus science. It's the faith of evolutionism versus the faith of Jesus Christ, the Creator. That's where the real conflict is, and people always, it works best if you can finally get it back to the real argument. Mr. Mackay, with the fall of communism, millions of people were giving back their choices. Would you give a little bit of something to boost the courage of having, again, choices in our schools, in our high schools, in our universities? Well, as you probably remember, I met with uh, Professor Maria Popper and we tried yes. to help her put together a book and I was very pleased mm. just the other day to yes. be in a school We've that was using that. Yes. the textbook, yes. which was an attempt to get the students to rethink mm. all the evidence that's presented to them and say, look, evolution is not the only, yeah. nor even the logical mm. conclusion. Mm. So there is a textbook available here that mm. deals with creation. Excellent. So the choice is there. Yes. But of course, the ultimate choice won't simply be about the facts you see in front of you. Mm. The ultimate choice will be about your relationship mm. to the creator. Mm. Because I mean, let's be honest, to most people, mm. So what? A fossil shark's tooth yeah. out of a hole. To me, it's exciting. Yeah. To you, it's a thrill. Yeah. But to some people, it's just a dirty black thing. Yes. You see, the ultimate result is the God who created has enough authority to hold you and I accountable for the choices that we make. Yes. So students, you do have the power to make the choice. Yes. You have the evidence to base your choice upon. Mm. And the faith is available from the Creator mm. to make the right choice. Thank you so much, Mr. McKay. Thank you so much. So you've heard. Please, there's a coin with two faces. You may choose one and leave the other outside, but be, please be careful. Choosing one is going to lead you to the Creator. Thank you so much for uh, being with us today. Uh, please join us for the next program. <laughs>